people what up you guys welcome back in one of my videos um i don't know about a week ago or whatever i spoke on a situation regarding my cousin thankfully he's been in a rehab somewhere in tucson and he's getting the help he needs i think he has like another couple weeks left so i spoke with his father uh my uncle you know we're trying to find him additional um trying to find him an additional spot to go you know, cause he doesn't need to be on the street and he does not need to be at their house. I got in touch with uh, somebody that used to work at the rehab that I, that I went to for four months. Uh, they said they have beds available, they have openings. So I went ahead and arranged that for, for my cousin. So all he has to do is go to detox, maybe less than 24 hours, speak to the staff as to where he wants to go which is the place i went to it's called something different now but yeah so as long as my cousin does what he needs to do while he's in detox he's not going to be detoxing i mean he'll be fine right so all he has to do is do his part and then they'll uh, a referral will be put in and then he could go to the rehab that i went to it's under new management, same location. So I don't know how the, the programming is, right? I don't know the, the actual get down right now. The main thing is he got a place to go. So I just wanted to speak on that, update you guys. So while I was thinking about all that, you know, it's going to be a new place for him. He's been a few detoxes and some rehabs or whatever, but it just popped in my head, like my first day at that place, like my first day in rehab what type of client I was, what did the environment look like. I went in there detoxing, right? You can't be at that spot while you're detoxing. You gotta be fully detoxed. Once you're good, once you're clear, then they send you to uh, the rehab. So anyway, I kind of slid under the cracks, under the radar, and I got my ass in rehab. That's where I needed to be. I didn't know how long I was gonna be there. I really didn't want to be there, but my mind frame changed like that frame of mind changed shortly after i was there i was like this place ain't too bad you know i'm already getting over my withdrawals you know it's not too bad i'll be able to work this out so i got a sponsor and and um work the program and here i am today right so as soon as i got there right i already saw this one girl staff member um cute chick so I was looking shot out and I'm sure she could tell that too. But anyway, so that was, that was, that was cool, right? I was like, okay, she's cool. She's hot, you know, we'll see what happens with that. So, but yeah, she, she ended up being cool and she ended up being a friend and she ended up doing a lot for us. You know, she, she actually went above and beyond, hooked us up with certain things. She knew I had my cell phone on me certain times throughout my stay. She knew I've been locked up. She knows She knows that I know how to keep things low key in there, right? So I walk in, it was like afternoon sometime. Everybody was having chow in the cafeteria. Um, so they're escorting me, you know, they say, hey, before you get settled, do you want something to eat? I was like, I guess, I was real thirsty. So I, I went ahead and, uh, you know, grabbed a tray, sat down real quick. I didn't have any belongings with me. All I had was what I was wearing, you know, some gray joggers or shirt and I think it was like a hat. And usually my, my clothing, my joggers, I mean, they're usually like fitted, right? But, but the joggers at that time, I was so shot up. I think I was like 145 pounds and they were they were like baggy on me like that's how much weight i lost every time i go on a run you know i lose so much weight man and uh it's due to the heroin addiction right you can't eat unless you're high so i get in there sit down sat by myself you know i didn't know who to sit with who to speak to all that good stuff you know i've been in jail been in prison so i, I I know how to get down, you know, while I'm in there, in those type of places. I approached my entire stay in rehab the same way as if I were in prison, as if I were in jail, you know. The majority of the seats 
in the chow hall where it were filled. Like everybody had their own cliques. Everybody was sitting with each other, you know? So I, there was an open table. I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna sit down real quick, eat my food, drink my, uh, my juice, I think it was. And then after that, I went to my, uh, to the room. It was a really nice, it seemed like a renovated rehab. It wasn't upscale by any means, but I went to go, um, um, I think they gave me some, some paperwork, like some things about the program. And then I just took a shower, a hot shower, man. So I think it's been like at that time, like two days since I took a, a shower. So I took a hot shower, felt good. Hot showers always kind of help you out like temporarily. They kind of like ease the withdrawals. Keep in mind, I was still detoxing. Like I've had plenty of withdrawals and that particular, particular withdrawal wasn't too bad. But so I was able to maintain, keep everything low key, all that good stuff. So I take a shower and go back out to the cafeteria, you know, because I didn't want to lay down and, and just have my mind start repeating itself. Because when that happens, you really feel the withdrawal. Like if you're just sitting there doing nothing, laying down, doing nothing, feeling sorry for yourself, leaning over so you have to, so you could throw up, you know what I mean? And then lay back down, like you really feel the withdrawal. So if you're kind of like, like out there, just, just like programming, I guess, just moving around, take another shower if you have to, just to feel a little bit better, then that's what you do and that's what I did. That's, that's how I got by. So I, I kept busy um, throughout that first week. So as I said before, I was pissed off with myself. I was like, fuck, here we go again, dude. I was 38 at that time pissed off at myself I'm like here we go again dude my dogs are at the house everybody's mad at me I'm freaking lonely I'm shot out I got an addiction like so many bad things like I had nothing to show for myself right but a criminal record and tons of, of damage to the family to my family and to myself you know, just a lot of shame and guilt, all that stuff that comes with relapse after relapse. So after the shower, I head back to the chow hall and um, <clears throat> I see this OG Mexican dude. Uh, his name was George. Um, you know, I could tell he's been locked up and there was some other Mexican homie sitting at a table. You know, it's like a small square table. So I walked up, introduced myself. I'm like, hey, what's up, man? My name's Daniel, just got here. And um, so I got talking to them, man. I was like, do you mind if I sit down? They're like, go for it, bro. So, you know, we got talking, small talk. Where you from? What I was doing there, what got me there, my drug of choice, all that small talk stuff, right? Where you trying to like fill people out. And, um, and they were cool. Like everybody that I spoke to was cool, you know? I'm not the type to go up to every table, every person and introduce myself, you know? I was just just miserable, lonely, depressed. You know, everything was sinking in. I'm like, fuck, dude, here we go. The place didn't seem too bad, but I was just like in my own head, like, God damn, man. Like, shame was at an all-time high, dude. And I had no idea what to expect. You know, I've been to other rehabs where you have to program. You can't lay down even if you're sick. You you have to get your ass up and go to meetings. That's how it is, man. If you refuse, then you have to leave the program. Because that's part of the program. That is recovery. You got to be able and willing, you know, to do it to do the damn thing, man. So, you know, I didn't want to cause any trouble for myself. So I just worked the program, right? Fake it till you make it. And eventually I did make it, man. So I got to meet George, chopped it up with him, spoke to the other homie a little bit. Really wasn't feeling that dude. He was just like a young knucklehead, whatever. But 
I've always been the type, even when I was younger, to hang out with like an older crowd. And um, I guess, you know, there's that frame, that, that phrase out there, old soul, right? I don't know if I, if I have an old soul. I just don't like bullshit, man. Whether I'm detoxing or on the streets, don't matter. I don't like bullshit, dude. Like, I don't like fakery. I don't like people lying. None of that, dude. I don't like negativity. None of that, dude. I will cut a motherfucker off. And, um, so yeah, I, I, I got real tight with George. Got real tight with George, you know, throughout that, throughout that stay. <clears throat> George was there for like a month. You know, a few days after that, I found out how long, um, I could be there. And they said four months, as long as they are seeing, um, that I'm trying, you know, that I want it. And I showed that to them pretty quick, you know, after the first couple weeks, got a sponsor, all that good stuff, started working uh, the steps. It was real cool. They took us to outside meetings, uh, to an AA meeting every day at four o'clock. Sometimes we wouldn't go, it just depends on the, if they had staff or not on the weekends. Uh, they also had visitation at the rehab on the weekends. Um, so it wasn't bad, man. Like it, it was totally cool. And it was some well needed time. Like I needed that time. Like I've heard people say they wish they could go to rehab and they're not even addicts, alcoholics. And they look at rehab as a vacation, man, but it's not a vacation, man. You know, rehab is not a vacation. Some people may act like it, like if they don't give a damn, but it's not a vacation, man. Like people are there for a reason. Like, I was there for a reason. I earned my bed in rehab. I earned that bullshit food, man. <laughs> I earned that every day. Every day that I was awake. Fast forward a couple months. Um, I got real tight with George. We weren't sure what we were going to do, you know, when we got out. But... The more we spoke to each other and, and the more we seen each other program, we noticed that we both like to help people. So George and I, you know, we were still trying to figure out what to do. We were speaking to different staff. He had some, uh, some trades on him, like construction, plumbing, all I had was people, man, people, hotels and dope. That is it. And plenty of girls, right? Plenty of women, dude. That's all I had, man. Just just people skills, people experience. And uh, I know dogs as well. So what, what am I going to do, right? Like, what can I do? So we were speaking to different staff, and they brought up the fact that, that we could work with other addicts at rehabs. And we're like, okay, how do we do that? Tell us more. They said, um, you could be a recovery support specialist. So I was like, okay, tell us more, you know? So we were picking the brain a lot, working with other addicts, like intrigued us. So we spoke with the owner and um, real cool lady, like real, real awesome lady. She brought her dogs, her dog actually like once a week or once every other week. And she knew I was a huge dog lover because we'd always talk about our pups. But she brought up the fact that at the University of Arizona, there's a course coming to where it's like a month program. And you could get, you have to go there and you could get your recovery support specialist certification. And with that, that helps you work with other addicts, you know, other people like us, other people like me, addicts and alcoholics. And so and we're like, cool. The problem was that we were in rehab. So, you know, we spoke with uh, the psychiatrist there. George and I had both, we had the same psychiatrist and um, my our psychiatrist and the owner of the rehab, the, the manager, the operations lady, they both approved for George and I to be able to leave the rehab and go to the university while we were still in rehab so they took us in a in a rehab van they dropped us off at the class we were there like eight hours 
out of the day. Then the rehab van would come pick us up. And um, that was so dope, man. So that happened on George's last month and my third month there. You know, I had another month to go when George got out. So we did that. <laughs> we did that. After all the rehab transports and, and all that, it was kind of embarrassing, but we didn't care, dude. Like it was so much fun to, to get out of the rehab. We became like the senior guys there, you know? We, because we were there the longest and people looked up to us. They were asking us questions. How could we do this? I didn't mind sharing the game, man. Like I, I'm a natural helper. I love helping people. I like helping people that want the help, you know? The people that want the help deserve the help, you know? Deserve is kind of a, like, funky word. People, people, some people might think, man, you know, they, nobody deserves nothing. Like, I get it, man, I understand it. But if somebody is reaching out and you can generally tell they want help, they want to change their life, I'm going to help you by any means, man. I'm not giving you any money, but... I'm going to help you from human to human, man to man. George and I spoke a lot with each other, man. We spoke about how, like, our programming was, what we could do better. Like, I looked up to him, dude. Like, we were both, like, kind of mentors for each other. Because we were all, he had, all, we were all each other had, you know, aside from the staff. And so it was cool, man. Like, we made it a point to help at least one person a day. Like, he, he was my rehab road dog, right? And um, so we, you know, we just busted our ass, dude. We had to study for that class. They gave us binders, like four different binders, and we had to study. On top of that, we were in rehab still. We still had to do our rehab program, you know? But we, we had weekly meetings and weekly visits with our psychologist, psychiatrist, whatever he was, and the owner just to check on us, right? They were just checking on us, make sure we were cool. They were they were just concerned that all of everything that was going on on top of what we were gonna do while we got out. They just wanted to make sure none of that was too much, you know? Like they just wanted to make sure our pressure level wasn't um, getting out of control. But we, we we had everything on lock, man. Like, we had each other, you know? If there were times we were stressing about, like, an upcoming exam for the class, we 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 spoke about it. We brought it up. We had an open relationship. And, um, you know, it, it was really cool having somebody there where you're on the same page, where you guys are on the same page. That was dope, man. It was real cool. Like, we needed each other so we could get through, you know, till the next day and then face tomorrow when that comes. There was a lot of decisions that had to be made on our end and the staff's end. I've never heard of that happening before. It was so dope, um, super thankful for it. I ended up um, getting a job as a life coach at uh, a treatment center like a month after I got out of rehab and did that for a year and a half. And then um, I ended up quitting there. Um, just out of nowhere, it was a Saturday. Not out of nowhere, it was a certain situation that went on. But I quit on the spot, and I was always reselling stuff on the side, you know? So I had to step up my game. You know, I had to do something about my life. I wasn't gonna have these these uh, bi-weekly checks coming in. So I'm like, okay, so I gotta step up my game. And I focused on selling clothing because I could scale the clothing a lot faster versus if I were just to sell random stuff. And so I did that, man. And and here we are, you know. Here we are. Bam. It's all money right here. But yeah, I just wanted to tap in with you guys. Just hit you with this little story. Not sure what I'm going to title it yet. But yeah, I just wanted to give you that update. Wanted to speak on my first day in rehab, my last rehab and whatever else I spoke on, right? So we'll see what I title it. But thank you for tapping in. I gotta get my ass to work, gotta do my shipping. Um, it is 7.36, after I do my shipping, I'm done for the day. So, catch you guys next time. Thanks for listening.